Welcome to Dorker Realms. While most gamers will be familiar with Dungeons & Dragons from the newest edition of the game, there is a movement among some players called the Old School Revival, taking inspiration from the design philosophy of the earliest editions of D&D and bringing them into the modern era. These games and adventures emphasize the weird, the challenging, and the hardcore. Bear witness as our intrepid players explore unusual and dangerous tales in these old school adventures. In this episode, we will be playing The Gardens of Yin by Emmy Allen using the Dungeon Crawl Classics role-playing system. These can be found anywhere fine dork games are sold. We go now to the table to delve into dorker realms. All right, welcome back again to this new episode. Are we on? We're on! Okay. Everyone's going! <laughs> So, uh, it's an all-new adventure again, and that means with every all-new adventure, we go around the table, introduce ourselves, our new characters, particularly Paul, because he dies every time. Uh, <laughs> I'm Ryan Roberts, playing Bendel L. Johnson, the Mighty Wizard. Oh, by the way, it's a new system, so I'm no longer a magic user, I am a wizard. And, uh, yeah, I'm the uh, aforementioned Paul that dies all the time. I have no last name, because I'll probably die this adventure. <laughs> So I'll be playing Ham Hammersmith. He's a dwarf uh, journeyman. That's it. I'm Vox. I'm playing Petra, the cleric, uh, who is still a cleric, but is now level four. I'm Robin. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm playing Alder. He's an elf. I'm Danny, and I am playing the dungeon master. You're playing the dungeon master? That, yeah, I am. That's my character. Okay, cool. Cool. That's a good class. Yeah. It's like the strongest one. So this is a lot of taunts. So, uh, <laughs> as you may have gathered, we're shifted systems after our near-world ending consequences. Well, that might be a little extreme, but we'll get into that uh, right now, and Danny will tell us how the things have shaped up in the world. We rejoin our adventurers one year after the conclusion of the previous adventure. Actually, it might be one year and change, depending it's on... It's at least a year and a day. <laughs> a year and a day. All right. So, uh, as a consequence of the previous adventure, all silver disappeared from the planet Earth. Sorry. <laughs> and this caused a widespread economic collapse and turmoil uh in particular the uh the banking guilds which were still in their infancy at this point in time uh basically collapsed and uh with uh, a lot of nobles losing significant portions of their wealth there was a lot of turmoil and a lot of small rebellions have sprung up across europe sorry <laughs> You've been hearing a lot of strange rumors lately, stories of a, a Welsh army invading England under the banner of King Arthur Returned, uh, vampires on the border of the Ottoman Empire, a resurgence of paganism across the Holy Roman Empire. Just good times all around. The birds are singing, everyone's happy. <laughs> That sounds like history. Are people still starving to death? Yeah, they are, yeah. I'm oh. sorry. The <laughs> world's still turning. Uh, at the end of the last adventure, uh, Binnell and Petra, our two survivors, had uh, spent some time excavating the church that was destroyed and burying Willow. And then after that, they decided to uh, split up for a year and uh, meet back up in Calais, which was their uh, sort of home base for the last span of time. Three or four <laughs> adventures? So, uh... I guess we'll just go to you guys uh, arriving in Calais and meeting up for the first time in a year and meeting these two new people. I don't know if you met along the way. Did you have something in oh, mind? Petra, I brought a new dwarf with me. A new one? Yeah. Oh, right. Uh, a dwarf with me. <laughs> <laughs> it is pleasure to make acquaintance. I am Petra. Oh, it's been so long since I've gotten out of that apple crate. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, m'lady. The name's Ham. Ham Hammersmith. Sounds like strong dwarven name. Did your eye get screwed up while you were in the crate? 
I know you wanted me to like smuggle you out or whatever, but that did not seem like the best plan. I, well, you know what? I kind of like small places and closed areas, so it's just the light. <sighs> cool. Uh, this eye does this from time to time. All right, <laughs> you know. Uh, I should mention Bendel's whole get-ups change. He's now wearing like a, a robe of like different shades of red that almost looks like a flame. And uh, on his wrists and ankles, he has a manacle with a single broken chain loop hanging off of it. And he has a bitchin' staff. Petra also has some uh, slight differences. The um, formerly silver holy symbol that she wore is now a heavy hunk of lead, but uh, there is now a glowing um, angelic crown hovering over her head, and uh, when she draws her chainsword and revs it, the in addition to the revving sound, you can also hear uh, a, a heavenly host uh, choir kind of singing softly in just the general area. Well, That's y'all a- are just real ins- <laughs> inconspicuous, aren't you? Who's the uh, the elf? It's his friend I made a long journey back from from the motherland. Oh, uh, just immediately ain't a replacement, huh? It's his friend I made. Oh, trying to, to fill, the elf. trying to fill the void. Of course not. Oh, that would be good to You know what happens? You, you lose one pet, you have to adopt another one. Helps you move on. That's how I always felt about elves. <laughs> <laughs> Sit, boy. Uh, I didn't know that you'd be bringing a demi-human as well. It was not intent. Simply made friend a long way. Wait. You didn't name me in your brain and wanted to fight me against other demi-humans. We're not pocket monsters. We're just short. And I spit a little bit. Mine's really good with a hammer. I have a sword. Uh, these and are defining properties. Can also cast spells, right? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I uh, I found a... Just, you know, none of my shit glows or sings or nothing, so... Yeah. That's probably for the best. It's gonna get real old real quick. <laughs> I, it already has. <laughs> I found some uh, a lead on some possible treasure, uh, possibly silver. I thought to tell the silver was gone. Yeah, but you know it's a really strong alchemic ingredient. I, I need more. Yes, the caves. It's all gold and gems. No, no, that's all lead now. The gold's fine. So are the gems. Just the silver. So, but I what, know. why do you think that some of it has managed to? Not? Well, I'm pretty sure it's an extra-dimensional space, uh. or possibly intradimensional. What does that mean? Talking about, like, other planes of existence? Yeah, yeah, separate from ours, so it won't That's been... ridiculous. There's no way things like that exist. I've been to hell, and back. <laughs> I've heard the stories. It sounds terrifying. Yeah. We also came from another world. <laughs> With a giant bear. Mm. And the shark man. Ah, oh, you surface dwellers. We killed the shark man. Listen, the only way she hasn't driven me insane this entire time is I've been just pretending that half of what she says ain't real. It's probably not. You know these religious folk. Yeah, all right. That's, that's they were the point. same things you experience. You just claim them as well. Uh, I'm going to recant my story now. Selective memory, I can <laughs> see. It's all anyway, right. Anyway, uh, so I have this lead that our GM is going to explain. <laughs> yes, so uh, on Bindel's trip back to the, uh, the great library where he once studied, which you can read all about in... Bonus content that may be available somewhere at <laughs> some <Eventually>. point. <laughs> I guess we'll have to make the Patreon pretty quick now that you're bringing it up. <laughs> so you manage to find one surviving work amongst uh, the destroyed library, which was a, a short scroll of research conducted by one of the former masters of the library. Uh, into a world that he referred to as the Gardens of Eden, and he describes it as a perpendicular world that kind of runs sort of like sideways through other worlds. And uh, he describes the process of how you reach it, uh, which is fairly simple. Uh, In any garden, you find a wall covered in ivy, uh, vines, moss, etc. You clear it away, and using chalk and charcoal, you draw a realistic looking door with keyhole hinges and a doorknob and on the surface below you write uh, under the door uh, in by way of and then your current location and uh, he mentions that it's quite an expansive world but that uh, any doorway only remains open for 24 hours so 
So you're you hoping think? we can go there and find silver and bring it back? Uh, you know, or anything else. There's always interesting stuff in extra dimensional or intra perpendicular dimension perpen perpendicular perpen dimensional <laughs> spaces. Well, how do we know that that wasn't like an ongoing effect? Because what if we bring silver over here and it just turns into more lead? Well, we'll go find whatever else we can find. It would answer some very uh, specific questions about the effect in place. If I don't it, think many people have questions about whether or not if we wander into a perpendicular world and bring silver back, whether or not it's going to remain I, silver. I do. And it would answer whether, like you said, is ongoing effect or was a one-time blap. A one-time a blap. A one-time blap. That's the uh, magical term. Well, now I know. All right, so... I'm in it for the treasure. <laughs> the treasure. I could the treasure. certainly <laughs> use some replenishment of my funds. Yeah. My coffers are uh, a little diminished as well. Oh, yeah, I don't have any money. Anyway, let's uh, see all the more reason to go to the Garden of Yin and find some loot. Three hobos. <laughs> One guy named Bindel. Who you call a hobo? Excuse. Oh, I'm sorry. You just all admitted to choosing your poverty. I'm a dwarf. I'm all... The, uh, the aforementioned uh, attitudes and opinions are not voiced by <laughs> Paul, the character player. Only the horrible, horrible dwarf that I'm playing. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I, uh, I scouted out a nice garden spot that we can go to. It's in a private garden of a uh, uh, rich person here who was willing to let me use it. Your in friend, exchange? Count Robert. Ah. Oh, Count Robert. He has been favorable patrons. It's a shame that the time cube got ruined by the magical energies that ah. emanated from the portal. Is that what happened? Yeah, mm. it's a real What's shame. What's a time cube? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Alright. Uh, it's a square Petra, clock, it, it, isn't it? It didn't work anyway. <laughs> yeah, Petra will, will kind of wink at Bindel and, and is kind of quietly laugh inside. Alright, so we go to this garden and we draw a very crude but de as detailed as I can make doorway and put you got a craftsman right here put doorway to Yin via by way of by way of Calais or what was Cal the Calais Calais yes. sounds like a ley line so yes uh, when you make your way through the streets of Calais it's uh, a lot quieter than it was a, a year ago you can see that there's been some uh, disturbances here in the past as well and Quite a few people moved away. Hmm. Uh, Count Robert, your old friend, uh, who you definitely gave a legitimate time cube to, <laughs> is now one of the more influential men in the, uh, the city. And uh, his estate is heavily guarded at the moment because you never know when uh, trouble might pop up in this brave new world. Build the wall! <laughs> It is a fortified city, so there is a wall. Yes! His property probably has its own wall, too. <laughs> sure does. <laughs> you make your way to his little walled garden, and you create the doorway, and then after you look away... I buy rations on the way. Smart. Oh, <laughs> smart. Right, that's a... That'd be a good... While everyone is buying rations or standing around and wishing they could buy rations, um... Alder's gonna give each person a uh, relatively nondescript glass bead that's shaped like a red cube and ask them to put that somewhere on their person where they won't lose it. I, in exchange for that, I give you seven rations. Yay! Elves should be I offer starting a bite with, out uh, of this piece of they, ham I mean, on yeah, bone. 3d12 plus 2,000 okay. gold. Is that his favorite meal? That's my only meal. I've been eating this thing for a month. Which Here, is, have some rations. Which is no, I have meat. rations. Just, oh, it's just, a, just an important item. I just want to make oh, you sure you know, keep it on your well, person. Which is for? Uh, for a pretty. I worked hard on them. Pe uh, no, no, I was just thinking Petra is going to try and... Uh, oh, Petra is going to work it into the band that's holding her hair at the nape of her neck. I put it in my pocket. That works. Next to the broken black oh, The pouch! <laughs> <laughs> the magical junk pouch! <laughs> God, the economy is doing so well right now. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> Are you? Did they kick you out for not? What? Not, you know what? Never mind. It's fine. All right, let's go through this portal, everyone. Yeah. You first. As you turn your attention back to the crude drawing, it is now an actual door waiting to be opened. 
All right. Well, time to start it up. <laughs> I just open it. All right. So, what is your marching order going to be in general, unless otherwise I'll specified? I'll go after him. So, second, him being Ham. Him being Ham. Ham Bindel. Then uh, Petra. Or. How about Petra takes the the. the yeah, last I was about to say maybe yeah. Walk second to last. There we go. How do you spell your name? Alder, A-L-D-E-R. Like ah. the tree. Metal stud in the front. And for the caboose, a singing dandy. <laughs> Chain sword and hymns. Can she be a dandy if she's a woman? Yes. Oh, I just meant... I don't know what words mean. <laughs> <laughs> dandy is in your soul, baby. Gross. What a Can we go to a boobies? <laughs> As Ham opens the doorway, it opens to reveal a, a verdant, overgrown uh, garden. You know, little, very nicely laid out. Uh, and uh, in particular, there's a pond with a lamp post hanging over it, which uh, illuminates the area as brightly as any torch you have would. The pond is ornamental as well, and uh, the surface is covered in floating lilies. There's a huge drifting fish, like bright orange and pink carp and catfish swimming beneath the surface. Rushes and cattails grow in abundance here, and uh, you constantly hear uh, a chorus of bird song, though you don't spot any actual birds. So, I got a question probably would have been pertinent to ask on the other side of the gate. What happens if we're here longer than 24 hours? Is there a different way to get back? Quite possibly. The research you have did not indicate, though. No. Hmm. Well, the great master was wise enough to always be back at the door within 24 hours. I do have a pocket full of world crystals. And you wanted to go in the daytime, correct? What does that mean? <laughs> uh, I assume so. Okay, just making sure. We would have what? to find another whale, though. Whale? You mean well. canoe? Well, yes, and but the, also the portal. Yeah, but maybe we can devise something with whatever. It doesn't matter. Let's just get back here within 24 hours. I, uh... Creating the door is certainly not very cost prohibitive. What, um, what is the door set into? The wall of the garden. Like, is it like a stone wall? Yeah, or? it's like, like a stone wall. Exactly. Can Alder find any, like, small holes in the, um... Face of the wall? The, like, no, what do you call oh. stuff between rocks? The mortar. The, the, mortar. the mortar to, like, big enough for a bead? Sure. Okay, he's going to stick a red bead there. I have an awful lot of uh -huh. these red beads. Yeah, it's almost like I made 50 of them, and we talked about it. <laughs> I'm saying, as Bendel, you have an awful lot of these red beads. Well, yeah, they're pretty. Mm -hmm. You just like to leave them places they're and with people? They're pretty. Yeah. Hmm. They're, they are beautiful and well-crafted. Mm. I'm on to you. So as you're standing uh, kind of at the entryway, a, uh, a lumbering turtle as broad as a cart, kind of ponderously moving, sort of wanders out of the bushes, uh, and uh, the ridges on its back form a bowl, and the bowl is filled with moss and detritus and has a single tree, sculptural and elegant, growing from it, like a bonsai scaled back up again. And uh, he just kind of like looks at you, just sort of staring at you, like, oh, this is something new. Can you talk, turtle? He turns and starts walking slowly <laughs> towards the know. pond. Magical place. Extra planar creatures have come in all varieties. Alder wants to get a closer look at that little tree. Uh, big tree, right? Big tree. I mean, it's on the back of a turtle. Even if it's even if it's as wide as a cart, it's still not a very big tree. It's not big. In terms of trees, it's big in terms of little bonsai trees. Gotcha. <laughs> like a Japanese back. maple. Yeah. Japanese uh, maple, so it's scaled back up. It's oh, really nice, it. and it seems like it's been trimmed. Like someone's been, you know, maintaining, doing basically bonsai stuff, but on a turtle. And Yo, the roots... I really want to pet this turtle. Go ahead. It's shin friendly. It's always the fun, the... He's going to lean down and gently pet the turtle on the head. The turtle closes its eyes, and it does not seem upset. He's nice! <laughs> <laughs> well, this seems like a pleasant place. Maybe. So far. I'll That's true. Stop him so he can go on <laughs> whatever was he was doing. He goes over to the pond, 
So, I really have no idea where to look in here. Just, just a heads up. I'm going to go look at that pond. Well, talk to the fish. Talk to the you fish. You can talk to fish. I mean, I could talk at fish. That's true. <laughs> Me. I don't have an inner monologue when I see something cute. Anyways. The, the fish are probably the most exotic, colorful, and beautiful fish that you've ever seen. It's like, like I'm tripping balls. <laughs> exactly. I'm tripping hammers. <laughs> so the door that we came through was on a wall. Yep. Can we see where the wall goes, like, in the distance? Yep. And uh, so the gardens stretch out pretty much as far as you can see in every direction, basically. And uh, in between each notable location, it's little pathways, you know, like a, an overgrown walkway or, you know, a row of hedges and such. And at every location within Eden, you can either go deeper into the gardens you can stay where you are, or you can go back to the location you came from, and from there, you could go deeper again, but to another location. Mm -hmm. So say, you could go one deeper, then you could come back here, and then you could go one deeper again, but go somewhere else if you wanted to. Or right. you could go back to where you already were. So, we need to go deeper. Into the garden, or into the other deeper? We need to go deeper. <laughs> Well, it, you just go deeper, and then you come, and you see where you go, and then if you're like, I don't like this place, you can go back, and then go deeper again, go to a different place. I see how it is. Correct. S Sounds so what, risky. like a yin by way of yin kind of thing? Uh, I kind of suspect that the garden's basically randomly generated whenever you <laughs> walk. <laughs> One might say it's sort of like the Abyss in Dungeon Crawl Classics, if they were going randomly for a real deep dig. Generated. Yeah. It is a world of shifting places. Here. Like a, tice, a, a toss of the die every time you walk. Are you saying we might be able to see more of these big ass turtles? Or something much more worse or much more interesting. I'd be up for much more interesting. Well, since what? we're being all meta, I have an 11 intelligence, so everything <laughs> Bindel says, as a dwarf, I don't really get. It's okay, buddy. I have a 9, it sounds fun to me. But you have religion, you have wisdom. That's true. Well, really, no, I've, it's they personality. Don't, they don't really have, have wisdom. wisdom. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, as a cleric, you don't have wisdom. No, Wis personality based. Wisdom isn't a stat. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> the world did change when all the stuff <laughs> left. All, all the wisdom in the world is gone. Apparently, Petra has gone from being f decently wise to very well charismatic. Personality doesn't mean you're charismatic. Just well, means okay, you have a large true. personality. That's true. I guess which person is, in the room. Which is funny because uh, if anyone, we th I think, think Bindel should have the largest personality. We need to go deeper. <laughs> Fine, let's check forth. Well, is there any place we can see from here that looks worth visiting? Well, I, I said we're going oh, deeper. Wait. It's uh, just taking a moment as we walk this garden path. My dwarf character can smell treasure and search for <clears throat> traps, but. Smell treasure? I can That's smell handy. treasure. Yeah, no, he can't. Nice. I just don't no. know how it works. <laughs> oh. Um, Petra is going to ask Bindel about his fancy new staff. Don't you talk about my staff? And I slip, like, slap <laughs> it and I put it on my waist and it turns into a belt. How Do I dare you? Something? Uh, it's very I mean, sensitive no, subject. I, talking I, about the smell a is just a passive staff. Thing. Oh, oh okay. rude! It was. I did not know. You shouldn't ask a man about his belt unless he's invited you to take it off. Well, it wasn't a belt when yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So stop talking. I like this person. Do I like detect treasure? I don't know. Not yet. I'll okay. let you know. Okay, okay. I like this elf. I have a good experience with elves. All right. I have a good so, experience with that accent. Following the path deeper into the gardens, you come to uh, what you think was probably a rose garden at one point. There's roses grown in neat beds in huge varieties, but it is now overgrown into a tangled mass of thorns dotted with brilliantly colored exotic roses. And there's one rose in particular which stands out immediately because it's pure black and it's basically at the very center of the rose garden. Uh, furthermore, the entire area here is covered in a layer of frost which twinkles in the light. And uh, it is extremely cold, uh, so much so that staying he lingering here 
uh, would inflict damage to you. Uh, and finally, there's a set of railway tracks here, complete with a little trolley. A snow parasite. What the hell is that? <laughs> this is some fucking dark tower shit. <laughs> what, what is... What are these metal bands? I go to the trolley. Let's go. Uh... It's, you know, there's a little trolley and you could hop inside and you could ride it if you want. Let's get on oh, Let's get on the trolley. All right. Oh, this is amazing. Um, <laughs> sorry, real quick. If uh, I think it should only be, wait, where is it? It should only be one action. Uh, Petra wants to cast Detect Magic. No, it's two actions. If, if if everyone's willing to wait that long, you will take a point of damage. I'm not oh, that that long, long will. We'll, okay, no, yes. never mind. All right, we'll hop on that trolley then. I didn't I didn't realize how quickly yeah. one would start it's taking damage. It's extremely cold. Yeah. Okay, uh, lighting a torch would provide some nice light and oh, a little bit it. of warmth, but that's it would it. be like lighting a torch while being naked at the North Pole or something. You know, it's like yeah, it's heat, but <laughs> fair point. All right, you guys rush the trolley and pile inside, and with a little toot and a spray of steam, it starts trundling along its little tracks as you're all... This is all, the most satisfying thing I've ever done in as, my life. <laughs> you're all shivering inside there because the seats are extremely cold. Shit! God damn it! Fuck! What's your language? What's this fast Look, look, it's going on its own. I just push the little thing and then it's going. And uh, it rides along, it trundles along for about 10 minutes, and then it stops in a, a dark little alcove, basically. And uh, it's essentially just like a little wooden sort of station, but moss and ivy have grown so thickly over the top and then draped in front of it that it's basically a curtain. You guys are essentially in darkness, uh, although you could easily break through that curtain. I turn on my staff light, which is currently on my belt. Also, I didn't really describe my staff. It's uh, It looks like it's made from ironwood, but it's kind of shaped like a chain almost, like chain links. Oh, really? And in the middle, it's broken by like a... Like, clearish crystal that looks like a flame and when it lights up it becomes like a lit flame and then it like continues above that like the chain's broken in the middle and it's like clearly one part like if I move the top at the bottom moves up as if it's connected but it's not hmm. oh it's like a wizard's bridezilla if I had to draw that and currently you know the belt buckles basically the light yeah oh your crotch yes <laughs> guide us and then uh it's like a big Belt buckle, it says, Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> this is the shape of Texas. <laughs> Typical. Most men think they can just light up a room by flashing their Johnson. <laughs> that should be a thing. No, it looks like a, a, it just it looks like a piece of flame in a crystal. It but. is Ben Bendel's big red Johnson. Flaming Johnson. Anyway, I'm going to look around. I don't think y'all knew each other like that. So this is just like a little station with a nice little wooden bench in front of it. These things like, are great. They should put them in cities. Efficient. So there's nothing else here? Not in here. There's something probably beyond the curtain of ivy. Let's go beyond the curtain of ivy. In dwarven cities, if only we, we could trolleys. bring this back to your friend, he would probably like it. The train or the, yes, the, the trolley? The trolley. This 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 term I coined. As named by Ben Bell Johnson. <laughs> I shall call it the Bindelophon. <laughs> Everyone is a Bindelophon. <laughs> oh, I should have said that. That's something you would do. It is. <laughs> All right, so we go through the curtain. We've said that word so many times, it has no meaning. <laughs> you just going to walk through or you know, like it's chop it down? Ivy, or, can you pull it apart? Kind of yeah, you totally can. I'm apart. just curious how you want to proceed. By hand. I, I right. let them pull it apart. You <laughs> pull it apart, and you're back to where you came from. You see the same little pond and the lamp post. This little station was here all along. But yet? It was totally obscured by the hanging ivy. So I want to go deeper. Do you want to go where you just no. came from? or I want okay. to go to a new place. Does the trolley go the other way? Uh, back to where it came from, yeah. But does it go further than that? Not at the moment. Okay. I'd have to go back to the cold. Maybe it did once. Maybe it will again in the future. 
This place is fucked up. Let's go deeper. Everyone all right with that? Mm-hmm. This is super interesting so far. The Bendelophon. <laughs> Do you have your Bendickets? Bendickets, please. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Your bendicket has not been punched. Punch this man the bendicket. <laughs> the bendicket. Sir, you've forgotten your bendicket. <laughs> you know, my father had a bendicket once. Nobody wants to hear about your father's bendicket. Now get on the train if you know it's good for you. Trot, trot. What's the, um... No jumping the turn style. You have to buy a bendicket. <laughs> <laughs> The John, oh, wait, Johnson style? That doesn't sound good. No. <laughs> Bindelophone. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> You're speaking to Bindel Johnson's uh, courier. No, 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 Bindelophone. <laughs> so after uh, another 10 minutes or so heading deeper into the gardens, uh, you come to an area that appears to have been flooded. Uh, there's standing water here, about uh, knee deep, uh, kind of at the shallowest and waist deep when you get further than that. So waist and, uh, deep and over my head. <laughs> yes, uh, Ham would need to swim, everyone else can wade. And rising up out of the water, there is uh, steel frameworks, which are eerily reminiscent of trees, but they lack any leaves, and they're spaced evenly. And uh, hung from these, uh, draped from tree to tree, or occasionally suspended from the branches, are a mandala-like network of strands of silk in a brilliant rainbow of colors. Now, as you enter the area, you kind of sense a commotion up ahead. I lost my space. <laughs> okay. Uh, very professional here. <laughs> ah. A few moments later. Well, now we gotta make a Bindel merch store. So, I can create all the Bindel collectibles. Bindelicals? <laughs> Ew. Kick me right in the bendelicles. <laughs> uh, Collect a bindel? The bendesticles? Bendesticles. <laughs> it was my bendestiny. So there's a, a little group of uh, three creatures here, and they're uh, roughly humanoid with a thick thorny stem in place of their torso and legs. Their arms are formed by intertwined leafy branches, and each one has a single large rose in place of a head. And they sort of uh, move through the water in your direction. They don't seem very pleased with your presence here. I cast shield. All right, then let's roll for initiative. That's not normal. Ooh, four. 19. 17. 18. All right, so the... Uh, the rose-headed creatures approach you, and uh, as they're approaching, they are singing in these kind of droning voices. It's sort of a, an eerie, disquieting chorus as they approach. And uh, they make their way carefully weaving around the, the threads of silk mm -hmm. as they approach you. And uh, that, that's they spend their turn doing that. And then it will be Bindel's turn. I cast Magic Shield. Okay. Huh. So a 14 plus 9 is a 23. So I conjure a shield that provides uh, plus 4 to my AC for 1d3, 1d3 turns, which I foolishly did not grab. Here we go. For 2 turns. Um, the shield will also block magic missiles, and my mercurial effect is that I get a plus 4 to all my other spell castings for the next two rounds. Oh, nice. Wow, that effect is even better than the, almost better than the shield. Mm, debatable, but it is very good. Yes. Because the rounds are longer than turns, right? Or is it no, the other turns way? Are longer okay, turns. okay. I see. All right. Petra will be next. Hmm. I'm not feeling good about these plants. Why not? Uh, the eerie singing is creeping me out. That's just silly. I also am kind of suspicious that my shield won't actually matter against these singing <laughs> Um It's okay, I'll blow up with a magic missile. 
Let's Maybe they'll see. blow you up with a magic missile. My shield blocks magic missiles automatically. <laughs> I just read that. <laughs> Petra is going to bless Alder. Uh, that'll be a f 15. So Alder receives... Oh, no, wait. Yeah, plus four total. Uh, a plus one bonus to all attack rolls for one turn. And it turns ten minutes, so, you know, a little bit. Thanks. And, uh, yeah, that'll be Petra's turn. How are you going to justify that to God? Healing this... Not healing, he blessing. Blessing this heathen creature? Because this uh, heathen creature is helping Petra in her goals in service of the deity. Mm. I see. Alder, it's your turn. <laughs> Danny is disappointed. Dad God is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to be angry, Dad God. That'll well, it's not favorite. an opposite alignment. He'll get so. there. <laughs> um, can somebody explain to me how casting a spell works? You pick the spell you want to use. Mm -hmm. You roll a d20. You add your level plus your intelligence modifier. And then you compare that to... A table, so once you have the result and you tell me which spell you're casting, you can look at it. Oh, that's not good. Okay, so. 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, lost failure. So the spell is gone. Which spell were you casting, by the way? Flaming Hands. Oh, so the spell is gone, and this, it also does not work, and you can't get it back until you rest for an evening. Well, I have good news for you. That doesn't actually happen, because you're so distracted by the song that you're unable to cast your spell. So you dodged the bullet there. <laughs> so I still have it? Yes. Okay. You, you just spent your you action doing nothing. You, you had this idea that you wanted to cast it, and then the song just got in your head, and you just kind of stood there. You know, these aren't as bad as the cats, but they're pretty terrible so far. <laughs> Hamboy? Uh, can I plug my ears with something? Hamboy! Yeah, I don't know, can you? Uh, I take pieces of ham from the meat I've been eating <laughs> what? and stick it in my ears. And then I look at you and I go... <laughs> Gross. Plug your ears, Hamboy. Oh, God. How old's that ham? Does it matter? It's going in your ear. I can't hear any of it because my ears are filled with meat. Greasy, Does that greasy even ham. work? <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna just act like yeah, it does. You roll it up like a cold cut. And it's not it's thinly that, sliced ham. It's <laughs> off the bone. Would that really block sound, though? Uh, the way uh, I do it with these big old bananas. Uh, what is mm. happening? Is it the next turn yet? I'll, I'll allow it. Okay. <laughs> he jams huge chunks of ham in his ears well, for his turn. So you said they're wading through the water towards us? Yes. Um, they'll be there shortly. So, As in, they'll attack you next turn. Okay. Uh, I don't... Do, is there a defensive position in this game? Well, you spent your turn putting ham in your ears. Yeah. You know what? Fine. I do. You can also move a short distance okay, of 20 I'll, feet. I'll, I'll, try, I'll, I'll be the front of the group. All right, yeah, you position we'll... yourself between the rose creatures and the rest of the party. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> and thus ends. <laughs> <laughs> he dies right here. Let's do it. <laughs> the rose creatures wade towards Ham. Let's see how this goes. Rose versus Ham. <laughs> you know, the South is trying to overturn that. <laughs> Rose versus Wade versus Ham. Right. Attack number one. Uh, 16. 22 to hit. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> and Ham! <laughs> and Ham! <laughs> Four damage. Ouch. Oh, he critted. Oh, jeez. Oh, nice. We gotta get that sweet crit table. Why did I do that? <laughs> I thought I could take him. Let's see here. Where's that monster crit table? Oh, it's a different crit table. Yeah, all over yeah, basically everything has different crit tables. Giants are the best. No, I bet. They have blind spots. No, they just kill you. Right under the feet. It's a card. Yeah, I get the hill giant. I get yeah, that reference. So this rose creature hits you right in the chest, breaking a couple of ribs. Uh, seven damage. You just took 11. 11 total. Yeah, so you're at 11. six life? Six life, though. 
You're still a very scrawny dwarf. Yeah. And the the last rose creature rakes its claws across you for five points of damage. <laughs> right. That storm. It's more frail than Bindel. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh wow. Speaking of Bindel, it's his turn now. I attempt to cast magic missile. Did he knock the ham out of my ears? <laughs> <laughs> When he, when he no, he knocked the, the breath out of your lungs. <laughs> oh, because I was going to say, like, they shot out. I'm like, oh, All right, song? if you want to. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. Okay. Can I, do I roll it first? Oh, sorry. I didn't, I was distracted by Ham. You would You're be. fine. Magic missile! Ooh. Um, so, 18 plus 13 is 31. Correct. Uh, I throw 2d6 plus 1 missiles. So I throw 8 missiles that each do 1d8 plus caster level. Um, there's 3 monsters? Yes. So I'll do 3 missiles to 2 of them and then 2 missiles to the last. So the first one, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, plus 12, so 25 damage to the first rose monster. Sure. 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, 22 to the second. Sure. Eight, um, 15 plus eight is 23 to the last one. All right, so Bindel unleashes a swarm of missiles and reduces all three of the rose creatures to little more than dust. What do your magic missiles look like, by the way? Oh, that's a good question. You said they were white. Oh, and they shoot no, that, was from, that was from the bow. That's oh. what it shoots arrows, because uh -huh. it, it shoots them magically. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I think they're like little firebolts, basically, because, you know, his, his patron's Prometheus. Works for me. I guess they won't be fireballs. So they're like they look like crystallized. Like if you took a, a flame and then crystallized it, oh, you like cool. shoots those. Hey, so, Bendel, if you're just gonna murder them all, why'd we even try fighting? That's why we tried fighting. Bendel, you have grown even more powerful since last I saw you. Yeah, I've been uh, working my magical muscles, if you know what I mean. Begin swole. It is showing. I softened them up for you. Uh, <laughs> so I've lost a lot of blood. <laughs> Good job, man. Petra is going to lay on hands on Friend Dwarf here. Let's see. Um, that will only, unfortunately, be a... Let's see, 5, 12, so it won't fail. Um, <laughs> but uh, at first, what's your hit dice? Are D10s, right? Yeah. Uh, you will get... Wow, two HP back. Oh my god. <laughs> I'll do it. You almost, you almost healed the scratch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I am not hearty at all. I'm a run. <laughs> all right, the next roll will be a 13, which will also be one die. Two more HP. All right, the road to recovery is paved with <laughs> twos, apparently. <laughs> Deuces wild. <laughs> Fidel's just cracking up. <laughs> so, you think spiders make these uh, silk webs or whatever? Well, that is a uh, hmm, distressing thought. So first, you bless this ungodly creature, and now you're. Spending so much divine power on this ungodly creature? They're adjacent. They're not opposed alignments. Mm. Just they're still ungodly. ungodly. Mm. Well, they're not cons They're not what uh, my um, alignment considers unholy. No, but okay. still wouldn't be a godly creature. Even if you healed me, it would be ungodly. You guys got chaos magic, right? No. Oh, different. I'm, I'm neutral. Ah, yes. So is Robin. Or Alder. Uh, Alder, this guy. Yeah, that guy. Alder. So, <laughs> I'm assuming y'all wouldn't be as cool with me trying to get some of that silk as you were with me petting that turtle. I'd play with it. I'd love to watch. Twelve. 
Oh, need a sword. Really? I have one. No, oh, I have a so sword. Much. I don't know why I have one. It's, it's part of my old kit back when I was a, a wee young adventurer. Does the water get deeper around the trees? Uh, kind of like varies in different areas. It's sort of waist deep in oh, some yeah. places, knee deep in others. Can Alder get over there safely? Yeah. Okay. Well, safely as in you won't drown. Yeah, well, that's the goal. And then he's going to see grab some of that silk. Okay. I'll watch from here. Uh, the silk is uh, extremely sticky when you put your hand on it. Oh no, uh, it's sticky! <laughs> roll a save versus uh, reflex. We should poke stuff with a stick. <laughs> how you feeling, bud? I'm actually really good now. Okay, how do I do that? Reflex save. It's nice of Petra to so heal you up like that. So a d20 plus oh, one? for yes. sure. For sure. I remember back in the day they couldn't heal anything. Three? They'd be like, that's it. That's the one time. Your hand gets stuck to the uh, the silk strands. And uh, a moment later... Oh. Three fat silkworms, as long as your arm, kind of come crawling down the silk towards Alder. Oh my god, are y'all seeing these chubby boys? I cast magic missile! <laughs> Alright, yeah. time for initiative. <laughs> Do not touch silk, got it. Don't worry guys, I'm on, I'm on it. Initiative of two. <laughs> Fourteen. Eight. Sixteen. How you doing, Alder? Oh, you know, fine. <laughs> I feel like maybe I should cut my hand down. Well, if your sword gets stuck and then, you know... Well, why don't we use your sword since you don't care about it? Because <laughs> I'm over here, here on the other team. side of the water. Oh, I got yours. Uh, what were Alder and Bindel's initiatives again? Two. Oh, I don't remember. I moved my dice. I'm sorry. Ohio, look. Don't worry, I'll. Uh... Sounded like I think I remember it was like seven or something, but I'm, well, I'm that's what wrong. my dice is on. But then, then my initiative would have been eight. Hmm. So it's uh, eight. There you go. It actually, sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Petra, you wanna start us off? Yes. Uh, Petra will rush forward. Into the water. Well, okay. S s uh, slot. Slot. Way over you there? can you can rush in waist high water. You just she's have not to, like, running. She's just rushing. Yeah. Yes. It'll sending out little waves of uh, water as Watch you slosh the through there. Can she make it to uh, oh, Alder man. this turn? You can, but roll a save versus paralysis. Oh. These webs are very like all over the place and so if you're running you have to make a save to avoid getting to stuck oh, there, on I'm the straight passing one. Past, oh, I, didn't I really mm. like the little in-chair shimmy that everybody's doing to indicate that they're running through water. Yes. <laughs> this is the most exercise we get during these Moving from the hips up only. It looks like, it looks like old people doing calisthenics mm. in the pool. That's basically what it is. Yeah. Can I decide to take a less hurried approach then? Sure, but you won't be able to make an attack this turn. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, next will be Ham. I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know, I, I literally have to swim through it. Well, go swimming. You know how, right? I know you dwarves sometimes don't because you just spend all your time with rocks. Yeah. I mean, eat them, sleep with them. Yeah, that's what puberty's like in dwarven country. Wait, what? I just meant like sleep... With them like a pillow. Oh, you meant that? No, we have some of our. I don't think I want to know. <laughs> Anime pillow. Anyway, <laughs> notice me, senpai. Uh, no, I notice you. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello there. Notice me. Um. God, I feel like I'm just rushing over. Uh. Maybe just maybe like take a, a measured approach instead of rushing over. Don't let Bindel Johnson tell you how to live your life. You mean how to You're die. your own man. <laughs> you true. make your own choices. That's true. Because, like, I mean, if you I know, I want to put him in my ears, but you still have it there. Oh. You're, well, no, I'm just... You're using your gem. <laughs> uh, I don't have any ranged weapons, and... Um, Throw your hammer. My only hammer. Throw your hammer. It's like a war hammer, too. Um... Can I 
You know what? I'll, I'll uh, hold my... Right? Can I delay my action? You can. Let's delay my action. Let's see what Vindel does. For the silkworms. Alder? Can I draw my sword and attack in the same turn? Yes. Okay, so he's going to draw his sword and go, I'm, I'm so sorry, little chubby worms, and swing it, whichever one's closest. Okay. Probably going to get his sword stuck, but oh well. Oh, he eats your sword, like, mid-swing? <laughs> Chop. Uh, okay. Nine. Total? Mm-hmm. Uh. Oh, wow. Uh. Well, that is either really good or really <laughs> bad. You, uh. You fail to uh, pierce the silkworm's chubby body yeah. with your awkward sword swing. Oh, it's real bad then. They must have a really high uh, AC. Uh, the worms crawl down the silk and they start biting at Alder. Oh god, they're even cuter up close. <laughs> What's your AC? 12,000. <laughs> if you take a thousand <laughs> off of that, it's accurate. It's 12. So, uh, one of them just kind of, like, nibbles on a thick part of your armor and doesn't get through, but the other two manage to, uh, reach flesh with their tiny little mouths, mm -hmm. doing a total of six damage between the two of them. Just think about how nice the silk will look that they make from your corpse. I mean, we'll get you down in a moment. Don't panic. Bindel? Or Ham, depending on... Help, I'm being nibbled. It's so cute. It hurts. Magic Missile is my best friend. <laughs> I cast Magic Missile at the darkness. <laughs> I roll lower this time. 16. Getting a 25. Is that That's a roll of natural one. Um, I throw a single missile at one of the worms. That does 4d12 damage. Oh, crap. <laughs> um, one second, I need to find my d12 because this is a shitty ass what d12 like. We call that a Kamea Kamea away. <laughs> Attack. <laughs> the, 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 this dwarven secret technique, the Kamea Meha missile. Come at me. Hey, me. Ah. Oh. One, ten, sixteen, uh, seventeen plus caster level, so twenty-one damage. You vaporize this chubby little silkworm. Oh, it's dead. Well, uh, only a couple more turns and I'll get him. Uh, yeah, I guess I have to enter the fray, but like cautiously. So you're going to spend your turn slowly moving over there, hand boy? Yeah, I'm small, but I'm sticky. Sure. Sweet. Petra? Uh, can Petra now reach yes. Alder? Petra will reach Alder, rev up her chainsword, and uh, Get it stuck in the silk. Yeah, attempt to cut through the silk. Okay. Oh, it just gums up all the gears and no. now it never revs again? No, now that won't happen. Like awesome fishing uh -huh. line. Um, it all in. <laughs> Does a, a f I don't, am I just doing damage or do I have to actually roll to hit the silk? Uh, do both. Okay, uh, I roll a 14 to hit. All right, that's fine. Okay. Um, eight damage. All right, you sever the, this strand of silk, so it's no longer connected at one end. Mm -hmm. It's just hanging in the water now. But, yeah, but yeah. Uh, Alder can maybe move around a bit now it's not stuck to to the two twined ends yeah now they can just like move on the tether basically yes. and the next turn i'll cut the other one <laughs> or just cut the, the other side of my hand oh, oh. that's what i mean yeah okay so i'm making my way downtown uh, downtown um faces pass is the, there's no worms bound. that i can reach yeah sorry is are there's is there a silkworm i can attack yeah okay then let's do it. Go for it. Okay. Board and sword. Hey. No. Oof. No. <laughs> do you want to make a shield bash attempt as well? Is that the D4? Or? I should, uh, I should like mention that you can crit miss and crit hitting. No. 
Okay. So just if you roll once, keep that in mind. Right. It's a D14 plus D14. your... The deep die stays the same, by the way. Whatever you roll mm -hmm. on your deep die is applied to all your attacks. You only roll it once per round. Okay, so the D14 is 9, right? And then okay. the deep dice was a 1D5. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is all new, and that's a 4. Okay, <laughs> so what happened? Uh, uh, 9 plus 4 is a 13. 13. Plus your strength as well, don't forget. Okay, so 14. Thanks. Uh, you fail to damage the uh, chubby boy. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> Alder? I'm going to try and chop another chubby boy. Cut him in half! One blow! Just cut his head off! Okay, that's a little better. Um, 15. When your sword fails to penetrate... It's fatty hide. I just, I can't hurt these chubby boys. Use the sharp side, <laughs> not the did butter try, side. Did you try stabbing him in the mouth? It's probably weaker on the inside. How about you just- So they both try to bite at you, but one of them is still just like stuck on a particularly thick part of armor. Maybe it's at the shoulder or something and it can't quite get through. And the I other one nibbles. nibbles for two points of damage. I like how you say armor, but we're wearing padded vests. <laughs> it's armor. It's padded. Like a gambeson? They're just like, he's just like eating the padding out of the armor. Yeah. It's like a moth. He's slowly oh, chewing yeah. his way through it. Uh, Bindel. Oh, God, do everything in here? Apparently. I'm gonna magic missile one of these little shits. Just one? Oh god, no! No more magic missiles! Did you really... Uh, oh, whoo! Whoo! <laughs> whoo! Uh, I do one point of damage to one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't lose the spell, though! His outer chub is a little... Uh, I, like, I like go, magic missile! And then a little... A little <laughs> spark lights him up a little. Oh, just, just the autopsy. The outer chub of Fatty Boy was singed. <laughs> but Pet we believe that was not the cause of death. <laughs> Petra's going to uh, sever the silk on the other side, thereby hopefully freeing Alder and maybe dropping the silkworms into the water where they will be less effective. Oh, uh, they're they're on Alder now. Oh, they're on Alder. Okay. They're like sitting cutely on Alder's shoulder. <laughs> They're just, they're being chubby boys. Devouring. Chewing through said shoulder. <laughs> I'll get a uh, 16 this time. How else would they be chubby if they didn't chew? 14, wow, I'm just wasting all my damage on the silk strand. 14 points of damage. All right, you have freed Alder from being connected to any trees. <laughs> <laughs> but still covered in silkworms. Yeah. Ugh. Ham? Oh, you know what time it is. It's ham, ham time. <sighs> you got it, bitches. Um, and then he takes a piece of ham out your of his ear and eats it. You're attempting, oh. attempting. If I line the hit, I'm going to truffle shuffle my hammer on his belly, tickling. No, uh, I'm going to try and knock one off of um, Alder. Okay. Yeah. He misses so, and murders my character. Well, that's why I'm doing like a croquet swing, not a whack-a-mole swing. Now, remember to keep track of your D5 separately because that is only rolled once yes. for both of your attacks. Okay. So, so the same roll applies to your first attack with the hammer and your second attack with the shield. Okay, so D5 I'll just roll right now. That's a three. Okay. And then... Uh, a D20 plus your modifiers for the hammer attack. 13 plus one for my strength, right? Yes. For my d20, so 14. And then my hammer attack is a... Well, it's 14 plus the mighty deed die. Which was 3, Which right? was 3. So 17. So 17. All okay. right. You hit. Roll for damage. Okay, 1d8. Ja. 4. And then the board. Well, you have to add your deed die to the damage, too. Oh, 7. All right. Got it. So... You and, so, and strength. Oh, eight. Mm -hmm. Ham uh, 
heroically swings his hammer and punts the uh, spellcorm straight off of uh, Alder's shoulder My boy. and sends it flying off into the water Flight. somewhere, also killing it in the process. <laughs> but. Okay. Uh, no, no triumphant because we're still battling. You so can still you use can, your shield. Oh, yep. that's right, the shield part. <laughs> and that's a D14 instead of a D20. Okay. It's a 14. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I boring you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I, I got a 14. One D14. Ooh, does that crit? No. Okay. Mm. So then you add your mighty deed die. Three. And then your strength. Four. So 18. You hit. Okay. Uh, it's 1d3 damage. 3. Plus your mighty deed. Plus, plus your, your strength. strength. <laughs> so 7. All right. Nice. So after, yeah. after punting off the silkworm, he then swipes around with his shield and knocks the other silkworm off in the other direction, also dead. <laughs> These poor boys. You're, you're, you're missing chunks of shoulder. <laughs> the shoulder will grow back. Well handled him. Thank well, you very much. Well handled. <laughs> I did handle it. <laughs> clank, clank, clank. <laughs> but very slowly. This is apparently a very dangerous garden. Sometimes it just kills and sometimes it just annoys. Yeah, left us something to do. Thank you very much. Uh, I so think I'll just stick to petting animals and not touching things of questionable snakiness. Are we going deeper? Does anyone need healing? Do I need to unstick my hand? I mean, you can just walk around with the silk wrapped around it. I don't something. want that. <laughs> All right, you do that and you get it off. It's a long process of like pull and then it's stuck on your other hand and you kind of. Does Petra only heal dwarves? <laughs> no. I was, I was going to. How are you feeling, friend elf? I'm a little above half health. That is an interesting set of knowledge you have. I mean, I've been worse. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> yes. Huh. You ever drink white old turkey with the elves? Lord, I beseech no. for your blessing oh. to heal this friend who did alert us to the presence of enemies and thereby prevent me from being the one attacked. I found out it was... You're an awfully selfish priest. He's all self-centered. You're like, oh, he helped me. It was for me. I yes, want a holy but mission. he is a chosen one. In his God's eyes. She. So she is a chosen one in her God's eyes. So there is at least some justification to that <laughs> selfishness yeah. in the eyes of the Lord her God. Spoken like a true future martyr. Okay, 3 HP and 7. That's pretty good. That lay on hands will do wonders for you. The fact that you can just cast it over and over and over. It's the best. It's so good. <laughs> Apparently, in the turmoil that affected the world, it uh, God felt the need to intervene more. He has increased my magic. Yeah, I, I think just more magic was released into the world. That's been what I uh, came to see. For you, for is, wizards, perhaps. Which is reawakening well, all of the yeah, gods. Well, yeah, I'm not a wizard, but like after the whole change and everything, you know, sometimes it rains frogs when I do magic. That's new. Also, like, the magic's just reawakening all of the gods. It's all from the same root cause. Your god's just able to take a more active role now. I believe that's sort of how I was uh, saying. Yeah, but it's from the magic. Are you sure it's not from prayer? I think it may be because of magic he wants to make sure his influence is more. Mm, I'm pretty sure he was basically asleep. <laughs> that is just not true. You can believe what you want, but I have it from a very knowledgeable source. Oh, yes? Uh, another another uh, Are we going deeper? Deeper from here? Yeah. Is there anything to search in this game? I mean, you probably have to, right? How much time has passed? Uh, since coming here? Yeah. About an hour. Well, that escalated quickly. Uh, <laughs> if we go deeper uh, again... here. Oh, here. Here. Yeah. Like everything... In the whole garden. Far. No, that's what I meant. Yeah, that's everything... Not, well, that's a lot of time. Or not very much time at all for what we've done. I know. That's what I'm saying. It escalated quickly. Wouldn't that imply that it was a large time jump? Anyways. Yeah, I just... In an hour, we did a lot. Sorry. If we went deeper, would we have to return back to this before we went to where we started? Yeah. Okay. We also might have to go multiple layers deep to find what we're looking for. I suppose. 
I yeah. mean, again, I, I had already used this reference that no one got, but this very much reminds me of the Abyss in Dungeon Crawl. Or, uh, yeah, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. All right, so yeah, let's go deeper. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a very aggressive garden. <laughs> We're looking for silver. <laughs> I'm really looking for anything that I find. Of course. I mean, if there was a good way to collect that silk. If only I had a stick, like cotton candy. Hmm? Just take the elf. <laughs> Clearly they can get it off. Grab a worm and we'll just take it with us. And we'll squirt it out like a condiment. <laughs> Would you like more silk on your hot dog? How's a hot dog? It's, well, I don't know if you're an f- animal lover, but uh, anyways. All right. <laughs> So once you cross carefully through the uh, the flooded silk garden area, uh, you reach the other side and the water levels out eventually and finally you're back on dry land, a little bit soggier than when you were before. And you uh, continue through the, uh, the little pathways of the garden heading deeper. And then you come upon a tangled maze of thorny hedges blocking the path forward. And uh, music filters through the area softly, like droning church organs, whale song, theremins attempting Gregorian chants. The source is a set of gold tubes, six inches thick, emerging from the ground, hidden Within the uh, the hedge maze, the tubes are sort of poking out of the wall of the maze. Oh, like out of the oh the very walls, the hedge walls themselves. No, no, no. I oh. think he means like above the hedge walls. No, from out within, come, coming out of them. So, do we break these, or do we just keep going? Well, we can't just keep going. We have to go back in a deeper, different way. You can go into the hedge maze. Right, that's what I mean. We can't, well, we have to go through the maze. Is it a maze or a labyrinth? It's a maze. Okay. It's a hedge maze. It's an important distinction to make. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, because a labyrinth, you end up in the middle and then you're done and there's nowhere to go. In a maze, you go to the other side and there's something on the other side. Okay. So we're going through the maze? <laughs> I just, but all right, do we want to go somewhere else? can finish your into a maze. Let's explore. Are the, the tubes protruding, do, are they just kind of golden-ish in color like, like instruments or uh-huh. do they look like actual gold? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All the copper wire! Affects <laughs> <laughs> me, will ya? <laughs> there is also, off to the side, a set of train tracks and a little trolley. <gasps> nope, that's the first pass. <laughs> I just think that probably goes back to the beginning. Yes. The Bedellifo. <laughs> no, 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 the no, what no, no. That's why I'm renaming it. It's the Bedellifo I found it. What was it called before that you were renaming it? Trolley. The Bedellifo. That's the only <laughs> name it's ever had. All right, so I guess let's try the okay, maze. We're walking through the maze. All right. Everybody roll a d20. This seems like it's going to be awful, by the way. Yeah. Will my architecture hurt? Uh, 17. Is this modified by anything? No. Five. Okay. Four. You rolled a 17. What's your intelligence? Uh, 18. Okay. Okay. 17. What did Ham get? Four. And your intelligence score is? 11. Okay. Petra? Got a 15. 15, and your intelligence? 9. Okay. Alder. Alder. Five. <laughs> Had a, a moment. You got a 5, and your intelligence is? 14. Alder's Gate. All right. So you guys uh, spend uh, about 10 minutes or so exploring the maze, and uh, you haven't really found much yet. Uh, you can continue to explore the maze, or you can go back the way you came. Let's keep going. How long? You, you, how, 10 minutes, you said? Uh-huh. Yeah, let's keep going. All right. Should we make an effort to make sure we all stay in contact with one another? Have some rope if we want to string ourselves along. I roll a 16 this time. Okay. 
Roll a 12. What's your intelligence again? 11. Okay. 16. And your intelligence is? 14. Okay. I roll an 11. What's your intelligence Nine. again? All right, uh, you've spent another 10 minutes exploring the maze, but uh, you still have not found the way out. Do you want to continue exploring the maze or try to make your way back? I'll keep going since it's only been a half hour. 20 minutes so far. I mean, when, when we do this, it'll be a yeah. half hour. All right. Okay. Ugh, 11. A four. Six. What's your intelligence score again? 11? 14. 14. Okay. So six. Ham, what did you get? Uh, it's 11 and 11. Petra got a 16. And intelligence is? Nine. Nine. Okay. All right. You have fully charted the hedge maze at this point. You finally uh, found uh, the way out on the other side. So uh, you are now able to go back or go deeper freely from this area. And you've discovered the center of the maze as well. What's at the center of the maze? Oh, you're about to find out. <laughs> That's pretty ominous. So there's a little pedestal in the center of the maze, and on it is a false tooth. I. Perhaps could you. I could. Petra wants to cast the tech magic. Literally everything. <laughs> <laughs> so 21, which um, I can determine exactly which objects or creatures are magically enchanted. It reveals creatures of non-mortal origin. That's probably not relevant. Um, I can tell if different weapons or items uh, uh, of equipment are enchanted and whether a creature is registering as magical because of its items because it is. The tooth is indeed magical. Be careful, the I tooth... I pick up the tooth. With a pair of barbecue tongs? No. With your mouth. <laughs> All right. Uh, you go. I get a rough gauge of the magic strength as the approximate level of a spell, or the general range of a bonus. Oh. Okay. So, it's all right. It's pretty right. good. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of like it's a... pretty good. I don't have a level to give you. It doesn't okay. have a level, so. I figured that's what <laughs> I pick up the tooth. All right, you're holding the tooth. I examine the tooth. It's very well made. It's a false tooth. Yeah. You do put it in your mouth. <laughs> I'm highly considering it. I, don't, I mean, like, I don't have a missing tooth or anything, though, so. Hit me. <laughs> Hit me as hard as you can. Just knock one out, but if you knock two, <laughs> ah, I need someone stronger. Who's gonna hit me? <laughs> Actually, I should like you should roll, and then if you if I if you do one damage, it's a sixteen you have to do. No, no. you're not. Uh, you're not dodging. Oh, I, no. I do three damage, punching him in the face. Yeah. All right, you take three subdual damage and you lose a tooth. All right, now give it to me. <laughs> All right, it fits in perfectly. Wow. <laughs> so do I fill up like a sorbet? It's tangy. <laughs> kind of reminds me of uh, fruit strike gum, but that could be the blood. <laughs> Your blood is sweet. I have diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. Well, it's not it, your uh, fault. I mean, he's been eating the same ham for like months. <laughs> that was a bit anticlimactic. Maybe, maybe it's yet to come. You know what? It's just it's in my mouth now. This is this is normal. You know, you know when we might find out about it. I don't know. We yeah. next. The next episode, you're right! This is this episode of Darker Realms! I got a tooth! Tune in next time to find out if the tooth kills him, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for listening! That does it for today's episode of Dorker Realms. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly of all, tune in next week.